What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So, before we head to the fishing village, gonna pop some cold bloods, and that should give me enough to grab a level. Yes, indeed it did. Beautiful. 45 vitality. I'm probably gonna go for 120. Go 50 bit, 50 skill here. Really maximize my levels of tryhard. But anyway, before we go to the fishing village, one thing you're gonna wanna do is hop on over here and change this over to the milkweed room. Now the milkweed rune is pretty interesting, beyond the fact that it has a small increase to item discovery. You notice it makes us a broccoli head. And what's unique about the broccoli head is similar to how the other rune uh, modifies the moveset of the beast claw, this will modify the moveset of the cost parasite, which is a weapon we will get after defeating the final boss. So a really cool rune to have just because of that, that neat little thing. Uh, if you've ever seen the Tentacle Man PvP video on the channel, that is uh, where it came from, is using the Cost Parasite along with the Broccoli Head. Very, very interesting setup for Arcane builds that can do a lot of damage. Um, and without having access to the Milkweedy Rune and this head in particular, you actually don't have the full moveset of the Cost Parasite. You have like a, you know, a broken fraction of the moveset, so... So anyway, with the clock tower open, we can go out and we find out that there is some weird village and they built all this stuff to block off this creepy village. And it's because this village is where they found a old one and then decided to mess with it. So head on in, grab some loots. And the whole reason we put the milkweed rune on was to talk to this guy. Let's see, we got the accursed brew. Uh, and the Accursed Brew comes from having the Milkweed Rune equipped. So now that we've gotten that, we can go ahead and warp back and change it out. It doesn't really matter. I'll probably just keep it on for now until I have uh, enough Echoes to go back. Um, head for the Lantern. So we're going to go around the corner for a Fishman. These are going to be the standard enemies of this area. The Fish People. So kill him. Dead. You can see they're pretty easy if you just run up on them. Swing on in here. Damp. We'll get that a little bit later. Um, let's see. Around the corner, kill fishmen and get loot. Two more fishmen. Go left, kill one and get the gem. Um, so up ahead there is a shaman near the well. I would suggest kind of luring these things away. There we go. And we'll run back. You want to be careful around the shamans because those those things can get you. Um, but yeah, still still lure these guys back to fight. There is a uh, giganto shark over that way that we don't want to mess with just quite yet. Kind of can't really see him from here, but I promise you he's there and he's not fun. Instead, head on in here. And you'll notice these, these are explosive barrels. So if you throw a Maltob at him, you have better aim than I do. Big ol' explosions. You go up top, there's a couple more fish people. We're just kinda cruising through and murdering everything here. Fishing Hamlet's not that bad when you know what you're doing. If you come here blind, they're all kinda like, these guys get ready to ambush you, these guys get ready to explode the room. And I know it, it seems like we're just like doo 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 and we're just cruising because we are. But this place is actually filled with all sorts of like little tiny traps that are uh, very much just being eliminated by the method that we are using to approach this place. So there's the fish man. You can see him over there. Of the oil urn. I'm going to run up this way. Great One's Wisdom. 
So we go over this way to kick down a ladder. There's our lantern. And then head on up into here. Follow this. Come on. This around. Um, you can't really. It's hard to see him, but there we go. There's a guy up on the ceiling. Oh, no. I forgot you're the hyper armor grabby type. Mash your buttons when this happens. You're still going to get hit a, a bunch, but you should be able to survive. Harrowed set, which is actually really good. Uh, in terms of just like raw defense, the Harrowed set is one of the better sets in the game. I'm gonna, gonna give you a comparison of it here in just a second. So using like the chest piece as a base, uh, this is comparing it to the Yargul Black Garb. And Yargul Black is like almost the armory type. You can see just really, really good values across the board on this. 120 physical, high blunt, high thrust. Um, you know, just, it's a really, it's a solid, solid armor set that you can't really go wrong with. And it looks pretty cool, too. This is uh, Simon's set, the guy that we've been talking to as we've been here. So, get that chunk. And head on back this way where we came from. Now, there's a chance that this guy might aggro when we drop. are looking good so far um, so we do not want this guy to just run up on us these things are really scary like I cannot stress that enough uh, the only enemy that I could even remotely compare to these things would be winter lanterns um, winter lanterns are annoying for a different reason but these guys they are deadly so we want to very creepily sneak up I'm thinking about it. I wonder if you could have used that to kill him in one hit. Maybe. Anyway, nice blood gem from him. All right, so this next part, before we we head on up and out, um, remember you were alive. Uh, what we are going to do is head on down for some fights. Uh, now, the thing we just fought, we're going to be fighting two more of them. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is put on your blue things, your blue elixirs. And then I would also suggest putting on a Shaman Bone Blade. Now the Shaman Bone Blade we haven't used until now, but what it can do is uh, basically enrage an enemy and make them fight other enemies. So we're going to pop that. Go down. I'm going to get my auger. Oh, wrong thing. And what we're going to try and do is mess up the one. Now there's going to be two of these guys here. In addition to the one that we're fighting, there's one that's up on the ceiling that you can see. Oh, oh my god, you can see why I don't like these things. Best thing to do is really just kind of stay behind them. If you're lucky, you might be able to get off an auger, but I don't wanna I don't wanna tell you it's easy because it's not. Eh, stop, please, God, no. Like, they just, they're, they're terrifying. I do not like fighting them. Yep, and that, that about went as well as I thought it would. So, what we need to do here is get that thing down to about 50%. And when we do, we hit it with a Shaman Bone Blade, and it'll fight the other one. And then we're good. I think I just, I need to be more aggressive against it. They're, they're really annoying to deal with. Um, but we need to deal with these guys either now or later. So it's kind of like, you know, a pick your poison type situation. Um, but since we got the shortcut, we can pop a blue elixir. And pretty easily run on back. Do not see my echoes, but I don't see them on him. Well, it's okay. I don't have that many echoes anyway. God damn. 
damn, I hate these fucking things so much. I think the best bet here might just be for me to go full Unga Bunga on him. And the thing is, if you can get the first one to 50%, as soon as you hit that threshold, uh, he, he basically, like, pauses and walks over to the second one. So, you have a clear opportunity. Uh, how, how close is this to breaking exactly? Let me see. 64. It should be fine. I'll just use this. So as soon as, uh, as soon as we can get him low, it should not be hard to finish it off things, but it's getting him, it's getting him to that spot. See how the shaman bone blade worked there. Uh, just let them let them beat each other for a bit. The shaman bone blade isn't gonna last forever, but by the time it wears off, one of them should be dead. If not, we'll just go and pop another shaman bone blade. What's weird is it'll wear like as you saw there, they stopped taking damage, and that means it had worn off, but they were still fighting. So I just had to go in and and reuse it. And as a reward, we get the Prakuyo, which is a really, really cool weapon. This is Lady Maria's weapon. Definitely one of the better weapons in the game, in my opinion. It's got a... It's cool. I want to say there was like a special, there was a special move you could do with it. I don't know. It's been a while since I've used it. Uh, but with those guys dead, actually, since we, everything's respawned, we'll pop a blue elixir for when we pop up. Um, we're going to make our way up into the building. Um, let me see. Let me scroll my notes here. Do, 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 do. Yes. Just ignore that guy. We're gonna work our way this way instead. So there's a couple enemies we need to kill here. We got one here. We got one right here. Another one in the back here. Now, before we go any further, you'll notice that there is another shaman up on the hill. Not only that, but there's another shark man that's waiting. So we're going to want a blue elixir here. This guy already knows where we're at. But this is just to try and buy us an inkling of time. You know, just help minimize aggro in any way that we can. And we run on up into here, and we grab the lantern. Go ahead and talk to him one last time. Please visit Fleet. Goodbye, Simon. We get the bow blade, pretty cool weapon, as well as the underground cell inner chamber key. Um, this is actually where we're going to proceed as we leave and we go out that way, but don't worry about it for now. Instead, there's a couple other things that we want to do this episode. So first is we go this way. And grab a can of cold blood. 
And I pop another blue elixir. I'm not even gonna deal with uh, with the fish man. But I am going to run up and kill the shaman. One's wisdom there. We go this way. Oh no, it's the other side. Oh no, please don't, sir. Uh, over here on this side of the house. There we go, bloodstone chunk. Yeah. Thankfully, this is the last of the uh, gargantuan sharks that we need to worry about after. Basically, from this lantern and onward, you never have to deal with those fucking things again. Which is so, so nice. Uh, so instead, now that we got that key, we are going to warp and do some stuff. So over to... Uh, we don't need, uh... We don't need those on anymore. I don't know what to put on. I guess, uh... I want to go to the underground corpse pile. Now, once we receive the key from Simon, that is going to um, trigger Brador to begin coming after us. Now, Brador will invade at four separate points, but by going and killing him now, uh, we basically take most of those invasions out of the equation. So instead, as we head up here, um, first thing we'll want to do, you can hear the bell tolling. This is Braidor. He's gonna stab himself. Really cool looking weapon. Kill him. And that would have been the first invasion. Now that gives us the helm. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down this way. We're going to use the key, open the door, and kill him. And by doing that, we prevent the other three invasions, and instead we just get to pick up his loot. Well, well, welcome to my quarters. Are you going to kill after all you've done? Kill me. <laughs> Anyway, kill his crazy ass and get the blood letter. Really, really cool weapon. It's like one of the few weapons that I've never done a build around, but I've always wanted to. Um, stab it in yourself. It's like the strength equivalent of the Chicago. But so the benefit to doing this is how we just had to kill him. Uh, in the next area we're going to go, you'd have to fight him three more times. And they were always in like really inopportune spots. So by coming here and killing him now, Instead of him invading us multiple times, there's just loot waiting for us to pick up when we find him. So, really, really nice change. Alright, um... Just checking some stuff here. We're still only 19 minutes in. I guess we keep... Let's keep pushing through it. I mean... We can get through a little bit more of the lighthouse hut. I want to save save enough time for uh, Orphan. But I don't know. I got, we can't reach Orphan within 10 minutes. That's the, the problem here. So, you know what? I, I know it's a little bit short, but we are going to actually wrap up here. Because we still got to... Just to add some, some context. Um, we have to go through this entire village area and then down and then fight some shit and then go to orphan. You know what? We can we can start the village, I guess. Let's let's try and start the the village. The village itself isn't that bad. We might be able to get through that this episode and save the rest for costs. So on this way. And right over here is where your first invasion with him would have been. So instead of needing to do that invasion, we just pick up the bloody darn bands. Uh, run on up here. Oh god, the whiff. These are more of the shamans, but now they'll summon lightning strikes, so kill that one. Uh, go this way. Drop. 
head inside. This guy tries to ambush you. Now he ain't gonna get that chance. Oh, that's right where that thing is. Head on over this way. Yeah, I'm like just barely not killing them. I notice the skitters right here. It's gonna run into that pit. Um, if you have access to a Maltov. Now you can always just reload and the skitters will be waiting for you. Um, but you'll notice he hasn't run away yet. And this area is a, a ambush. But what we're going to do here is Maltov. That's going to kill the skitters. Oh god, I thought I killed them all. Alright, hot vials, redstone chunks. Now you might be able to kill a couple of these guys with those barrels over there and another well-placed Molotov. A little bit of damage. Um, otherwise, when you drop, run right over here. As you can see, for whatever reason, they get stuck by the ladder there. Makes it a little bit easier because they just sit there doing this and we can hit them through it. I know, it's ridiculous. We're, we're basically safe while they're stuck. Super cheesy stuff, right? After that, just clean up everything. Uh, this is how you just get back up. This is the... to show things, you know. Y'all know how I like to pull the world together. This is where the skitters ran and dropped down. Oh, shit. And a piece of loot. Well, we'll get that. We have to run back. We'll get that a little bit later. That. Um... These enemies will try and grab you. Oh shit. I might actually die of this. I don't know. I'm missing a little bit of health. Oh no, we're good. We're good. I'm safe. Like that. Like that. Go twice. Uh, when we head outside. Oh, there's one more. And then we get a very nice gem. You can really see where the, the surface separation is with uh, your brightness turned up. But anyway, let's run out over here. And uh, oh, there we go. Went a little too far. There we go. Tempering damp blood gem. A lot of stuff really, really good for our weapons. Um, head on into here under these scaffolds. This is where Brador would have invaded the third time with the beast hide garb. Head on up for some goodies. And then we're going to shoot across over here for some vials. And that about wraps things up for Barnacle Village. Uh, so with all of that done, we're going to work our way back. The oil, kill a fish, run ahead for shaman, continue vials, shortcut by green lanterns. Taking a quick gander here. Um, yeah, I think that is everything. And it's it always the thing that's craziest about this to me is like it takes you know so much time to to put these together. If you've tuned into any of the the walkthrough prep streams, you know you know even an area as small as this will take like 30 minutes between like meticulously going through and taking notes and planning, and then you play it 
and it's like you you blitz the whole area in five minutes just cleaning house and it's such a I don't know it's like uh, just seeing all that planning all that execution is great uh, so hug the right here go on over so it gets you this dude starting some goodies give me that oil uh, head on up Those shells can be broken. You can also do it over here as well. Kill this guy. And then continue around and right here with these green lanterns. And there's a gate taking us all the way back. Alright, so this looks like a more proper spot to wrap things up. Uh, we're going to change back on over to... We're going to change some rooms around, repair our weapons, all that good stuff. So we're going to close out here. On the next episode, we'll make our way down, and then we will fight the Orphan of Cause. So stay tuned for that. And then after the Orphan, all we have left is a Great Thumeru Ithil. And then on to uh, Moon Presence, and we're done. So stay tuned, and I will catch you soon enough with more.